Are you tired of all those hair loss treatments and products that claim to work but don't? My name's William Gonitz and I am your no frills, no BS certified trichologist that is going to help you understand how to tackle your hair loss and actually regrow hair. Welcome to the Trichologist Podcast. My name's William Gonitz. I am a fellow with the World Trichology Society. I have 20 years of trichological experience in my clinics. I've treated, you name it, probably been there, done that. And I'm here bringing you my 20 years of experience so that really more than anything else, you can benefit from everything that's transpired in my life that has gotten so many of my clients to a place where they are regrowing hair. And realistically, I want to talk about how I kind of got here because I I wanted to be an architect originally, and now I am a pretty well-known trichologist. So in the process, I discovered so many things because of my own personal experience. When I was 17 years old, like many people out there beginning to lose their hair, they have a very uh, knee-jerk reaction to hair loss. And It's one of those things that people don't really understand until they've gone through it. I remember talking to a guy when I was probably 20, 21, and I was really concerned about my hair loss. And I was looking at him and he had buzzed his head and he said, oh, I don't care if I have hair. I would just shave my head. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, if you were losing your hair, you might not be saying that. But ultimately, in my experience, I apply a lot of what happened to me, especially from an emotional perspective to my clients. And so I'll go back and and just really discuss a little bit about how I got here. And you might find some connection in that situation. And additionally, I'm going to talk about some of the problems in the industry, because realistically, there's not a lot of solid solutions that are easy to come by that work for everybody, because there is no one size fits all. Everybody's different. And when you are trying to sort through the mayhem that is the industry. You have to clearly understand what's happening to you personally, because you might have a very different situation than I do, or, you know, your neighbor does or whoever else in your family has lost hair. So you have to understand what's happening to you. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of background on me. Um, And so realistically, I started losing hair when I was 17 years old. So I was actually at an all guys military school. Ironically, a lot of guys were losing hair uh, that early. And uh, in the process, I started using different products to see what was going to work for me. And I used a product. The first product that I used was actually Rogaine. And so Rogaine for me, which is just simply 5% minoxidil, I used it once a day. And that at age 17 worked pretty well. And so I was a you know senior in high school and ended up using that. It stopped the progression of the loss at the time. I was also a really big uh, workout guy. So I was on a lot of things, you know, like creatine and tribulus and a bunch of things for uh, really boosting testosterone and, you know, working out, which ultimately then actually exacerbated some of the hair loss. So no one tells you that, especially back then in the 90s, but ultimately that led to my first bout with hair loss, which was again 17, 18 years old. Everything was pretty quiet until I started working for a chemical company while I was going to school and I was a a chemical salesman. And I literally went from shop to shop in Phoenix, Arizona, where I was living at the time, and I would be in the chemicals. Now, I didn't really think much about it because most people weren't sensitive to these chemicals, but I ended up, you know, after about a year working for that company, I ended up starting to lose hair just beyond fast. I mean, so normal male pattern loss takes years for your hair to digress. So usually it takes at least a year, if not longer, for that to become noticeable if it's just male pattern loss. So I'm at 20 years old and I went from a full head of hair to thinning, basically losing almost 50% of my volume in six months. And so if you can imagine at 20 years old, I was thinking to myself, what am I going to do? I'm going to be bald. I'm going to be bald at 25 at this rate. So I, I mean, legitimately thought I needed to get married right away because I have a very funny shaped head and people would not 
<laughs> want me to be bald, let alone, you know, a spouse. So I, uh, I was like, I need to do all these things. I need to travel the world. I need to, to be free while I still have hair. And these are irrational thoughts. Like it, you shouldn't necessarily be thinking that per se, but that's how I felt because so many people identify with the look of themselves in the mirror with hair. So long and short of it was, I was doing very well uh, at the time, you know, working for the chemical company and going to school. And so I had the resources to, to literally try everything. And so uh, I was using Rogaine again. And now, three years later or two years later, Rogaine didn't work for me anymore. Uh, so I actually applied it to my scalp and I was getting this really scaly irritation. And uh, at, at one point, I was actually starting to get these like potato chip like flakes and I was peeling them off of my head because I was having a reaction to the propylene glycol on the Rogaine. And I didn't know that, but that's, you know, I kept putting it on anyway, hoping that it would work. I started on finasteride, otherwise known as Propecia. Finasteride now is is super mainstream. It's in topicals. It's it's everywhere. But at the time, it was the first FDA approved solution for men. And I was like, well, this is definitely going to work. So I'm going to use finasteride. So I was on now Rogaine and finasteride, still losing hair. So then I tried everything else under the sun. I mean, you name it. There was a product line called Kevis. Uh, their whole thing was uh, that they were going to use clone sperm cells to uh, basically help you regenerate hair follicles, which really has no bearing in anything scientific that would work, but it sounded cool. So I used that. And then I used, I mean, anything I could find legitimately, I was taking at the time to try to stop my hair loss. And uh, it just kept going. So, I mean, again, I've already lost 50% of my hair at this point. I'm applying more and more things. Hair just keeps coming out. I remember being in the shower and just seeing legitimately clumps of hair. Now, knowing what I know now, that is not a normal male pattern reaction. But at the time, obviously, I didn't know. And so my next stop, was to uh, start seeing, you know, the very high end physicians in Phoenix. And they were like, well, you know what? I don't know what to do for you. You're already on all the things that, you know, would help with the finasteride, the minoxidil. You might want to consider a hair transplant. And so again, I'm 20. So I'm thinking to myself, I got to get a hair transplant at 20 years old and my hair's still falling out. So what do I do now? So I ended up going to Bosley. Most people know the name Bosley. And so I went to Bosley in Phoenix and I remember, you know, being really geared up for this consultation. And I was like, oh, I can't wait. They're going to give me this solution. And I walk into this consultation room. There's an older guy behind the desk and he takes one look at me and he's like, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm, I'm 20. And he's like, oh man, he's like, you need to lose more hair and then come back. And realistically, you probably need to go bald. And then then we can understand what we're working with because we don't know how bald you're going to be. <laughs> and, and that was absolutely not the answer I was hoping for or expecting. And ultimately that basically led me, that, that was the last letdown that led me to really begin to realize that I had to study hair loss. I needed to learn to help myself because no one is there to help me. Like all, all the top guys are telling me that there's nothing that can be done. And I'm thinking to myself, a year ago, I was fine. So now what's the difference? How did this get from point A to point B? So how I got here, because so here I am now, I'm, I'm going to be 43 this year. I've got most of my hair. Uh, I learned f from things that weren't in the United States yet, that there were other possibilities and there were other treatments. So to kind of get into how I got into the clinics, there was a company in Australia and you know we're talking, you know, back in the early 2000s, I mean late 99, 2000, the internet wasn't, you know, very robust at the time, but I found a company in Australia that was selling what was considered to be revolutionary technology. It was low level laser therapy for hair loss. Now, I, you're probably listening to me while I'm, I'm saying this and like, oh, I've heard about lasers. They don't work. And you know, this, that, and the other thing. However, 
at the time, this was just earth shattering. So I ended up importing a laser from Australia and using it. And it was actually the first thing that worked for me. So it, it ultimately got blood back to the atrophine area. For me, there was inflammation that was causing a ton of swelling, which then actually created a sort of a calcification of my scalp. I'm not going to go into the gory details, but for me with inflammatory hair loss, that's the beginning of the reversal for me. And then that allowed for other things to work long-term. But that's how I ended up getting my hair loss to stop and actually regrowing some hair was laser. And I ended up going off of minoxidil, going off of finasteride, going off of everything. And laser was the thing that worked for me. So now granted, there's a lot more to that story and, and we'll get into that later. But really that's how I became what originally I was going to school to be an architect. And then I pivoted to become a trichologist because I started studying trichology in the process of my own journey. And then when I realized that this laser thing actually worked, I it was, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to actually open a laser clinic because everybody in this area is telling me that there's nothing more I can do, but I found something that worked for me. So of course there's more that can be done. So that's what I did. So at, at 22, uh, I opened my first laser hair regrowth clinic and we will actually have our 20th anniversary next month. So at the time of this recording, uh, we will have our 20th anniversary in actually about uh, six weeks. So it was 20 years ago, almost exactly that I'm telling the story. And from that, it it led me down the path of learning about other people's situations because I had my own scenario and of what worked for me, but my situation is going to be different than yours. And your situation is going to, again, be different than somebody else's. So everybody's unique. And what the problem with the hair growth industry is there is so much one size fits all stuff. And in this, it, literally the landscape of the hair loss industry, there are podcasts, there are uh, whole industries dedicated to talking about how bad the hair loss industry is. And that's sort of shocking because there's a lot of truth to it, but there's also a reason why. And the reason why the hair loss is so difficult to navigate is again, from all the things that I've said about people being unique, but more importantly, of trying to figure out what's going on with you. What are the variables that matter? Because most of the time people will look at you and you might be losing hair on the top of your head and they're going to go, oh, well, it's male pattern loss. You need DHT blockers. You need you know, Rogaine, you need finasteride. However, maybe that loss is from something totally different. Maybe it's diffuse alopecia areata, which is an inflammatory condition, the condition that I had and still have and still battle. Um, maybe it's, uh, you know, an, another form of hair loss that's temporary. Maybe it's telogen effluvium. And that's because you had a stressful event and it just started dumping off of your head. There's so many different variables and every one of them has a different treatment. So I'm just going to go over some of the things in the industry that could lead you to go, none of these things work. And the problem is physicians, most in the United States at least, physicians are our go-to. So most of the time people are going to start with their stylist and they're going, you know what, I'm losing hair. And their stylist is going to go, try an ioxin, which is the, the boilerplate response and good for an ioxin for disseminating this information, but it is straight up not realistic. Nioxin is a product line that helps clean your scalp. And back in the day when it was the original blend, it was a decent product. It actually did for some people slow down shedding and, and actually decrease some of the inflammation. But realistically now they change the formulas acquired by another company. It, it's just a fancy shampoo. So if you're dealing with a situation that is caused by internal items, nutritional factors, hormonal factors, any shampoo that you put on your scalp isn't really going to do a whole lot. So the first stop is your stylist. Most of the time you are not going to get any information that helps you there. And that's no fault of the stylist. That's just they don't have 
access to that information. Their job is to cut hair or style hair and, and color, et cetera. So the next stop is your physician. Most of the time, and it is stated on the internet, go see a dermatologist for your hair growth resource. So a dermatologist, by definition, is dealing with the dermal layer of our body, which is the entire just outside of us, which is skin. So the epidermis or the dermis. And that is mainly, as far as a specialty, going to be looking at something like skin cancer, mole checks, dermatitis, um, how that's going to be, you know, from a cosmetic perspective, how are we going to keep ourselves looking young? So few dermatologists specialize in hair loss. And by few, I'm talking less than 1%. So you, you're going to a community of people that aren't being going to be able to give you any real information most of the time. It would be like going to a cardiologist, a heart doctor, when you've got, you know, a, a boil on your foot and it's like, oh, hey, heart doctor, how do I fix this? And they're going to go, ah, I don't know. And that's basically most dermatologists simply don't know how to deal with a hair loss situation. So that's the second problem is that we're relying upon dermatologists. Now, again, for all the dermatologists who I know and I trust, they, the ones that are specialists are a huge phenomenal resource, but they are few and far between. And if you can find them and you can actually get into them, it's, it's a very expensive process and uh, it's not covered by insurance. So, and many of them don't look at certain aspects of uh, hair loss, which is the nutritional factors because most allopathic physicians don't deal with nutrition. So now here we are. So you've stylists, dermatologists, now what? So there is a new, it's new in the United States, at least a new specialty, and it's called trichology. Now I'm a trichologist and I've been doing this for 20 years and and to all my trichologist friends, there are a lot of trichologists who aren't very good at being trichologists and they just don't have a lot of experience. And just like going to medical school, you go to medical school to learn about medical conditions. It isn't necessarily then applied to the individual until such time as they have their residency. And so if you're a trichologist and you graduate from trichology school, unless you've been a resident or you're practicing under somebody else, you're not necessarily going to know how to treat everything. So again, you got to find somebody who's experienced. And so that's really the reason for this podcast. At least at the very end of the day, after 20 years of doing this, if I can give you this information and it can help you, then... I'm hoping that there is a legacy of, of goodness that's coming from the, the 20 years of doing this because it's been, it's been a wild ride of seeing all sorts of wild things. So as we get down in, in the further episodes of this podcast, I'm going to talk about a lot of those very unique situations. Uh, but right now, talking about some of the key things, the key misconceptions about what's going on in the world of hair loss. So uh, kind of circling back to some of what you're going to see on TV, you're going to see, you know, a lot of these big name uh, nutritional supplements. So that's, that's great. And if you take the right nutritional supplement, it is certainly going to stop your hair loss, assuming you can control it that way. So there are a lot of one size fits all products. And so that from a supplement standpoint, a lot of supplements can be very helpful, but you must make sure that you're using the right one for you. And you might not know what that is until you get blood tests. And if you don't know the right blood tests to look for, you're going to go to your physician and they're just going to order a bunch of random blood tests and they may have overlooked the key blood tests. So just so you know, and I'm going to go way deeper dive in the future on this, key blood tests that you need to be looking for, ferritin, so which is your iron storage protein, vitamin D3. I would highly recommend also getting your blood type. These are over these are, those are my big three of the most overlooked blood tests and why they matter is you have to have a certain amount of 
of nutrients in your blood for you to grow hair properly. So you can just negate those right out of the gate if you have good blood levels of those key nutrients. So that was just sort of covering the supplement misconception. You then go into a lot of these big names that you see like hair club. So hair club, if you've heard of hair club, if you've been to hair club, hair club is a hair system specialist. So a hair system is simply a fancy name for wigs and toupees. And you may have gone in and you see these amazing results that are advertised like before and after he was totally bald and now he's got a full head of hair. Woohoo! And that is from a hair system because there's no way to go from totally bald to a full head of hair. It is simply not possible. So they advertise that because they do make you look like you had a full head of hair with a hair system. Back in the day, unfortunately, what they were used to be doing, they would lure you in with these promises of these before and after pictures. And they would literally start shaving your head in the area where you were going to get the hair system. And before you knew it, they were literally taking out the clippers and they're like, oh, no, no, it's going to be okay. And then they stick this toupee on you. And that in itself, again, it costs thousands of dollars per year. You have to have multiple toupees. They rotate them. However, if, if done right, it looks really good, but it's also a toupee. So that's a hair system. Hair transplants. So hair transplants, they now are pretty much exactly the same as they've always been. You're physically moving hair from the back of the scalp to the front of the scalp in a surgical fashion where they're physically removing the back of the head uh, scalp and they're dicing it up and they're putting it where you want it. And that is a, by definition, a hair transplant. Now they say, oh, well, we've got all this new technology. Cool. Well, that must be making all the difference in the world to make you look so much better. Well, they do have new technology and it's about extraction. So they're saying, you know what, we're going to take more hairs from the back of your scalp because we can just punch them out with little needles and then we'll extract those hairs and still put them in the front of your head or wherever you want them. And for those people who have dead hair follicles that physically can't grow hair in the area in which it's been gone for say five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years, then you can transplant a hair to anywhere you want and it will grow. And that's great. However, you have a hundred thousand hairs on your head. Like that's how many follicles you started out with. So if 33% of your head is bald, which is the top of your head, and the most amount of hair that you can transplant is approximately 6,000 hairs, then how are you going to replace essentially 33,000 hairs with 6,000 hairs and it look okay? And the answer is it's not going to look okay. And I have had many people come into my clinic that they were just trying to keep the hair that they had left and they had a frontal hairline that was transplanted. And when you transplant the hair, that transplanted hair will never fall out, but the hair around it will. So, because it's still subject to dihydrotestosterone. So they basically had their frontal hairline transplanted and then behind it, it fell out. So they've got these cornrows. I mean, literally like cornrows in the frontal hairline and they had to have laser hair removal to get rid of them because they look so weird. And then they were coming to me to grow back the hair on the back of their head because they were trying to keep the back of their head hair. So there, there are problems with a lot of scenarios that are out there. So you, you know, I've covered a lot in a brief period, but essentially just to go over what's out there, you've got hair transplants, which I just talked about, which is surgery. You have the hair systems or toupees and or wigs. And then you have nutritional supplements, and then you've got really topical applications, which nowadays you can get all sorts of different topical applications. You can get uh, topical applications with uh, topical finasteride, spirolactone, which is a uh, anti-androgen. Um, you, you name it, you can make it. And to a degree, that's good. It's a lot better than it used to be. So, But that's not going to work for everybody because if you have a nutritional deficiency and you're putting spirolactone, finasteride, 8% minoxidil on the top of your head, it's not going to do anything because the nutritional deficiency is what's holding you back. So there are just so many things. And it's, you know, everybody 
I, the amount of times that I've seen random things work for people. Um, I had somebody tell me once that I think they they started putting crude oil, a crude oil on their head. There was a product, I forget what it was called, but it was literally raw crude oil. And they coated their entire head every night with, he brought it in. It was legitimately crude oil. It's like black tarry stuff. And he applied it to his entire head. And then he put on one of those uh, rubber uh, swim, yeah, whatever, swim helmet, whatever they, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So it, they put it on their scalp and he went to bed with it every night and he, and he said it worked really well. And I was like, okay, well then why are you here in my office? Because I'm, my job is to grow hair back. And he said, well, they stopped selling it uh, and I can't get raw crude oil anymore. And I'm like, well, I'm glad that they, they stopped selling it because it sounds terrible for you. But I'm, I'm also interested to see why it, it worked for his, his hair loss. So I actually speculate that one of the reasons why it did work is that there are all sorts of microorganisms on your scalp. So there's bacteria, there's fungus, there's uh, these little tiny parasites called Demodex parasites. I'll do a deep dive on that later. The Demodex parasite is the same thing that causes mange on dogs. So if you've ever seen a dog that has mange, it's this scaly, just really nasty, like almost lesions on the scalp because these Demodex parasites are little bugs that burrow into the hair follicles and then proliferate under the skin. And it causes this immune response that creates scarring. Now that doesn't happen on humans, but we have two different forms of Demodex that live on our scalp that will actually uh, feed off the little epithelial cells inside our hair follicles that are, are what make the hair. So if you've got these little parasites, if they're under control, it's not a big deal. We all have them. It's just like dust mites. When they get out of control, things are problematic. And I think the crude oil killed off a bunch of this stuff. So the, again, random things work for random people. And the trick is, is you have to figure out what is going to work for you. And you know, that's, that's what I'm here to do is to make sure that you have this information, you know, to cover all the bases. And I'm going to just give you a little bit of, of a snapshot of the things you have to cover. You got to make sure that you are looking at your family history. You got to make sure that if somebody else was losing hair in your family, you need to know about that. So ask around. Uh, additionally, blood tests, ferritin, vitamin D3, blood type. We'll do a deep dive later on on that. And ultimately, you need to know, uh, you know, are you dealing with inflammation? Do you have gut issues? Gut issues are a big deal when it comes to inflammation. Uh, do you have itchy scalp? Um, are you dealing with acid reflux, constipation, diarrhea? Are you dealing with uh, some type of medication? Did you start a medication? And then six months later, your hair started falling out. Well, then that would literally be a direct correlation with inflammatory hair loss. So these are things you got to be conscious of when you're dealing with hair loss. And we're going to, again, we're going to do a lot of deep dives on these things, but I wanted to give you a background on me. And really, I'm, I'm really grateful that you're listening to this. And I hope you tune in in the future for the new podcast, for the ones that are coming out. We're doing deep dives on this and I think you're going to love it. And uh, thanks so much for listening. See you in the next episode for more no BS hair loss treatment info.